Yeah, it's a nice day to be outside in the garage. Not a lot to do outside today. I'm probably going to have to run the plow later, but uh, we definitely need some heat inside. Uh, it's approximately 18 degrees Fahrenheit outside right now. Hey, welcome to The Gurge. In this video, I'm going to be powering my diesel heater with a Blue Eddy EB3A power bank. I'm going to be using the DC side of this. I'm using this power cord that I purchased on Amazon. It comes pre-installed with an Anderson power connector and a 5521 plug. So I'm going to be running off the DC side of the EB3A and I'm going to be using the 5521 plug, which I like a lot because it's just a much more secure connection than the cigarette lighter connection. Let's get it hooked up. If you like this kind of content, please subscribe to The Gurge. There'll be more diesel heater videos, so please subscribe to The Gurge. So right now it's about 35 degrees out in The Gurge. Uh, we definitely need some heat. I'm gonna be out here all day. I wanna run the diesel heater off the EB3A. We're charged up to 100%, and I'm gonna be running off the DC side. I'll show you the hookup that I use for the power connections. On the DC side, we're going to use the 5521 connector. I'll turn the DC on, and I'm going to put a link to this cord. It comes made up with the ends on it. I really like these Anderson connectors. So plugging into the 12 volt should be up to 10 amps, which we're going to get close to pulling. I'm going to put a meter on the positive side so we can see what kind of current that we're drawing. We're going to get just about 10 amps, maybe a little over. Blue Eddy should be able to handle it. So let's take a look at the electrical connection I've got over here. Underneath on the bench here, I've got wired up a 120 to 12 volt connector, and I've got an Anderson connector on that. And that is this connection right here. And I'm going to hook into the 12 volt going into the heater. And I like the nice positive connection that they make. As soon as I did that, the diesel heater turned on and we're ready to go. Just for the record, it is about 10 o'clock in the morning. Again, uh, 35 degrees. And we're just going to let this run as long as we can. Let me hook up the DC amp meter so that we can see what we're doing for current. If you're interested in getting one of these meters, these clamp-on DC meters, make sure you get one that the clamp works with DC. They cost a little bit more money. The other thing is when you're using the clamp meter, you got to make sure to zero it out before you hook it up. So we're gonna hook up to the positive side and hopefully we'll get everything in frame here. All right, so I'm seeing no draw whatsoever on the Blue Eddy. I'm gonna zoom in here and we'll kick on the diesel heater. So the real question is how long do these things run for on a power bank? And previously when I was using the conversion on the AC side, I got about almost five to six hours of runtime. That was at four hertz on the heater. I found that when I turn the heater down, it, it draws a lot less power, obviously, and I think I can get upwards of 20 to 22 hours. So we're seeing the current kick up here. The most current that gets drawn is during the startup cycle. We're at four amps, almost five. We're gonna see upwards of eight, nine, and just over 10 as this thing kicks on. Here, let's just watch the meter as, as this turns on. So most of the current gets drawn because the glow plug is heating up and that's why we're, we're seeing a lot of current drawn here. As it starts to draw more current, the fan kicks on, but it's just gonna be very brief. Um, as the heater starts up, you'll hear the fuel pump get going and then it will drop significantly. So there's the fuel pump. You can see we're getting upwards of nine and a half amps, almost 10. just over 10 and that's it it dropped down to under three we're at about uh, two two amps two and a half three and again that's going to drop down a bit more i'm going to run the heater at two hertz when we get going and then we'll take a look at what the blue eddy thinks it has left for for power we were at 100 percent when we started and we're just going to let this run for the better part of today i've got a lot to do out here in the garage i, I definitely need some heat uh, but I don't need to, to be up to 70 degrees, like um, I'm hopeful this will bring it up to about 45, maybe 50 degrees. We'll work on the, uh, we'll look at the temperature as we continue out through our day. I'll, I'll come back and turn the camera on now and again and we'll check in on the Blue Eddy and see how it's doing.
So we're running at 4 hertz right now. I'm going to bring it down to 2. So we're running at 2.1 hertz and that's where we'll run throughout the day. Uh, the draw is showing about 0.8 amps. And let's take a look at the Blue Eddy. See where we're at. So we were at 100% when we started up. We've used approximately 2%. Uh, we're pulling about 9, 10 watts. And this is showing that we've got a runtime of about 19. It's oscillating between 19 and 21 hours. I'm going to say, just to say safe, we could run for, for 19. It looks like we're staying at the 21. Uh, well, all right. So just to be safe, I'd say 18 hours. I'm not going to be running this for 18 hours. So we'll, we'll see where we're at. Uh, we're at 10, 12 a.m. right now, 35 degrees in the garage, and we're just going to let this run today. I'll be out here, and I'll, I'll jump on here now and again and get a uh, reading to see where we're at and see where the temperature's at. But I'm going to run this at 2 hertz. All right, so we've been running for almost an hour, and uh, we're up a couple of few degrees here, down to 94%, showing... Uh, Bouncing back forth 18 and 20 hours left of runtime. Pretty steady at 9 or 10 watts of draw. And we're just going to let it run. I've been out here working, cleaning up, and uh, you know, it's comfortable. I know it says 37 degrees, but uh, out in front it's a little bit warmer. This is just back behind where the where the air is blowing out of the heater. You can see there. Alright, so I just got back from plowing and uh, Nice to have a little warm air in here. I don't have the greatest plow in the world. In fact, uh, things went about as, as well as planned plowing. Uh, the plow broke, the, got a flat tire on the rear passenger side, I got a fix. Uh, one thing after the other with that thing, but I'm, I'm glad to have it. Anyway, uh, we ended up with 70% uh, in five and a half hours. I, I'm done out here for today, so I'm gonna actually uh, shut everything down. I did wanna show the shut down um, and the reason I don't want think it's a good idea to bring this down to like below say 5% when you're running one of these diesel heaters you need to put the diesel heater through its shutdown cycle which turns off the fuel runs air over the burn chamber and cools it down so I'm gonna reposition the camera so you can see the power draw on that it also turns on the glow plug briefly and we do draw upwards of 8 amps on the shutdown so it does take a bit of power to do the shutdown you want to leave that in reserve you don't want to run this down to zero and then turn it off and you certainly don't want to just turn off your diesel heater without going through the shutdown procedure you, you want to do that uh, for the cool down is it bad for it if you don't uh, the opinions I've seen online vary it's not good for it uh, I haven't I I've accidentally turned off my diesel heater cut power to it while it was running what ended up happening is a bunch of exhaust was coming out the air intake and um, I didn't have any other damage besides that, but I, I wouldn't make a habit of it. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and shut the diesel heater off. What I do usually before I shut it down is I bring it back up to four hertz and let it run for just a second to kind of heat things up, um, burn off any excess carbon or, or something that may be in the burn chamber. I, I have, I've actually taken this heater apart and uh, the burn chamber is perfectly clean, so I haven't had a problem like that. But I, I do before I shut it down. I just run it for a second, and you can see the power power draw went up a bit, uh, just just about two amps. So anyway, we're good. Let's go ahead and shut it down. I'm going to hit the the off switch, and you hear that the fuel pump stopped and the fan is still going, blowing over the burn chamber. There's still some warm air coming out. Obviously, the burn chamber is still warm from running earlier. Um, you're gonna see our power consumption go up as this turns off, the fan's gonna kick on higher. And yeah, so we're, I think the glow plug comes on as it turns off. I can't be certain, but that would be really the only reason we start drawing more power. I'm not hearing the fan go, and that's that's pretty much the only other thing that can pull pull power in here. So I think, I think that's the glow plug turning on to burn off any excess that you, that's in the burn chamber. So this procedure takes a couple of minutes. Yeah, so we're finishing at uh, just about 70%, a little bit under. Yeah, 
so the uh, power consumption is definitely going up. That's definitely got to be the glow plug kicking on. So uh, I'm really pleased with that. I'll put links to the cord uh, that I use in here in the description below. I'll put a link to the uh, meter that I'm using here in case you're interested in getting your own measurements and seeing how things are, are shaking out. And that, that's, you know, in my opinion, that's the way to, to learn how these things work is to, to watch the power consumption, keep a close eye on it, watch your fuel consumption, what have you, and uh, figure out what works best for you in your in your particular installation um, so anyway thanks for watching appreciate it please like uh, the video if it was useful for you and definitely subscribe to the Gurge for more upcoming content just like this have a good one